Hello, everyone, and welcome to Book Trips 15 Minutes with a Meryl Moss Media production. Today, we are thrilled to welcome back New York Times bestselling author Brenda Novak. She has written the super popular Whiskey Creek series, which we all love, the Fairham Island books, uh, the Dundee, Idaho series, and so much more. You, you love her books, you know her books, um, and we are really excited to have her here today to talk about her newly released series, Silver Springs. Uh, and the first title in the series is Finding Our Forever. Thank you so much for joining us, Brenda, and welcome, Bla welcome back. We're so glad to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. I'd love to come. Absolutely. So let's chat first about Finding Our Forever. Um, okay. As I mentioned, it's the first in, in the new Silver Spring series. So tell me a little bit about this story, what characters we're meeting, and what everyone needs to know. Well, it basically kicks off the new series like you were talking about. And the series itself is based on a woman who tries to compensate for a deep, dark secret in her past mm -hmm. by really making a difference in life. And the way she's chosen to do this is to start a boy's ranch. And if you're not familiar with what a boy's ranch is, because my Canadian uh, editor was like, you know, what is that? <laughs> it's basically a reformatory school for young teenage boys. So if they're acting out, if they're having trouble, um, then they can go to this place and it's, it's like a boarding school where they get the, the extra help that they need and uh, maybe some extra discipline depending on what their specific problems are. So um, Ayana takes in a lot of broken boys. So it creates an endless supply of these sort of injured heroes, which I love that archetype. Um, because it, you have this kind of tough exterior um, that maybe they haven't quite dealt with all of the issues from their childhood and the reason why they went to this school, but they have this in common and they have this wonderful woman who has stepped in and nurtured them and tried to save them. So Ayana is really a great character because you don't know what led her to this. So you find out in, in Finding Our Forever, that secret is revealed, kind of her motivation for why she's done so much and denied herself a lot of the happiness that she deserves by trying to provide happiness to all of these broken boys. So, and then you also get to meet her oldest son. She's adopted eight of them. Oh so in goodness. Finding Our Forever, um, and she takes in as many as she can. I mean, she tries to mother them all in this school, but you know, obviously only one person can physically raise so many children. But okay. Um, okay. Eli is her oldest and he has had a very difficult childhood which was what caused him to act out. Um, and she gets a lot of private funding and grants and stuff to be able to take in some of the, um, you know, kids that have been floating around in foster homes that are just really struggling still. So he was one of those. Um, and she's been able to make a big difference in his life, but he still really has difficulty with trust. So when he meets Cora, the hero of this or the heroine of this book, um, she's actually Ayana's birth child, but nobody knows it. When she comes to um, apply at the ranch for a teaching position, she doesn't know whether she dares to divulge this. She spent so much time seeking her birth mother, just has this burning desire, even though she has good adoptive parents. Okay. Um, she loves them. She has a good relationship, but she just wants to know, who am I really? You know, where do I come from? Okay. And for some reason, some adopted children have no problem with this, but this yep. story is specifically based on a friend of mine who just went through this process. And it's almost a thing of, for some people, it's like, be careful what you ask for, because mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. reconnecting may not be as positive and as Absolutely. exciting as you might dream. Um, with Ayana, of course, she's a wonderful person. So that's a good thing. But when Cora starts the story, she doesn't know if this news is going to be welcomed. It was a closed adoption. Her mother has never come looking for her. So she doesn't know. So she thinks she's just going to go down there, work for a little bit, get to know Ayana, see if there's any openness to being able to reveal this. Well, when she meets Eli and the sparks start to fly between them, you know, now she's got this secret. Does right. she tell him she really is? which would then divulge it to Ayana. So it becomes a, a difficult situation for her. So it's kind of fun to watch them work through their problems and find their, find their forever. <laughs> so interesting. Oh my goodness. So um, as you mentioned to your friend, was she the inspiration behind the series or did She was the inspiration behind this one story, okay. but not the whole series. Yeah. Okay. No, my, um, actually my brother went to a boy's ranch for a little while. And so I was familiar with them living in the West. I think they may be more common on the Western States. I don't know about yeah, back East, so. but so anyway, I just always thought that that would be some of the, the people or young men that go there. Maybe they have them for girls, so I haven't researched that side. But um, they, the, some of the young men that go there, they're very um, wonderful, wonderful boys, yeah. but they just need some extra love and help. And uh, yeah. so I, I just thought it would really be great to create this endless stream of heroes. Some of them are not broken. Some of them have actually adapted well. Um, and, and then maybe it's the heroine who has some extra problems that they're dealing with in their life for whatever. So it's not a... a 
you know, each book doesn't sort of repeat the same thing right. on all of them, okay. but you get, you do get some variation for sure. But it just gives me a chance to kind of work with some characters who have some really interesting things that have happened in their past that put them in a unique situation. Certainly. Now, okay, so speaking of the other stories, you've got three more coming, and very quickly, I might add. Um, it's no a big one, year. <laughs> no One But You uh, is the next one out in May. Uh, mm -hmm. Until You Loved Me is out in July, and Right Where We Belong will be out in October. Um, right. As you mentioned, are these going to cover all different characters, each different boy and their, their story? Um, not all of the heroes will have gone to the boys' ranch, okay. uh, but most of them, let me see, so far, no one but you, he did go to the boys' ranch, and they thought, oh my gosh, we found a great home for him, he's been adopted out with this wonderful, loving couple, and it turned out so picture perfect, I mean, he gets his life turned around, he goes to college, everybody thinks it's great, well then, somebody murders this old couple, and they think that he did it, that, oh, this finally this bad seed shows oh his true God. side. Well, he didn't, obviously, he's the hero yes. of the story, yes. but it makes it, and he's just been um, released because, you know, they couldn't make the charges stick. There wasn't enough proof, but the whole town is still very judgmental and very um, suspicious of him because they think he got away with killing these wonderful old people that took him in. Yeah, and so yeah. the heroine of that story, she's really down on her luck. She's go gone through a, a really brutal divorce because the, the guy she's trying to divorce is a police officer. He has a lot of power in town. Mm -hmm. He looks wonderful to everybody, but she knows the flip side of what he's like at home. So she's just trying to get away from him, but she can't support their son alone. He's not, he's fighting her on child support and everything. So she goes to take a, a position as housekeeper Keeper with the guy who supposedly killed his grandparents but have just come home. He's trying to get the farm back. You know, he's been in jail for a year fighting this right. trial and everything. And he get, has to go home and deal with the aftermath of these people that he loved and, and probably the first people that truly loved him. He's obviously, you know, sad that they're gone and trying to figure out who really did it and clear his name. But he needs help to be able to get his dependent sister who they've put in an institution. He's determined to get her back and take care of her the way his parents would want her, him to do. So he's got these really great, you know, mm -hmm. goals, but wow. um, he's fighting a lot. And so it also, her level of trust, because she's got her police husband telling her, you know, you're freaking crazy going out there. He's, you know, he'll kill you. And so it's kind of fun to see her um, gain trust and realize what a good heart he has and be one of the first to truly believe in him as they go about proving his innocence. Oh, this, ser this series sounds so great. Um, oh, but I have to ask, what for you made you decide to release them all just a few months out from each other? Well, it was actually a decision that my publisher and I talked about. We thought it would be really fun. Um, in series, a lot of people will wait till the whole series is out before they'll buy any because they like to, you know, people like to binge watch shows. They like to binge watch or binge read. So we were kind of trying to keep people happy by like, okay, you know, let's let's get a lot of these out at once. So we did the four stories in one year um, to just kind of get everybody involved in this series and give them a lot at once. I love that. You know, I have to say, I think it speaks a lot to your publisher too because there's a number of authors who I speak to here on here um, who say, you know, the publisher is so stuck in, in old publishing ways and they won't try anything new. So I think that that's really a wonderful testament to your publisher and yeah. really looking at the trends and what's going on right now. And, and yeah, I love that they're willing publishing. to kind of cut and jive. You know, I mean, I think yeah. Harlequin is really good about trying to adapt to new things that happen. I think they're one of the best publishers at mm -hmm. that. Um, they definitely are willing to try new things and they also are uh, much better than a lot of publishers at working with their authors as a either a marketing partner or the ideas that they put out there yep. they're much more willing to kind of do a partnership toward and I love that I love being able to have input on um, things that uh, in a lot of situations an author wouldn't have input on so That's I appreciate wonderful. that they are sort of forward thinking they were the first to move into the digital market you know they do a lot of firsts absolutely so now what you're saying is the, these are the four in the series and that's it? Is there anything following these four? No, we think we will continue the series. Um, we don't know exactly how many. We have. I have a few in my head. I call it inventory um, <laughs> of what I want to do next. So we'll see how it goes. I mean... I still have four more stories of Whiskey Creek that I would like to add, and we haven't, and we've talked about that, and they're fine with doing more of those. They just kind of wanted to jumpstart this new series at the same time, all at once, which is why we didn't do some of one and some of the other. Um, but we'll get back to Whiskey Creek and, and get those others released too. So if if anybody wants to know when those are coming out, they want to sign up on my website at uh, brendanovac.com for my newsletter, then I'll be able to keep them up to date on what's happening in both series. Oh, that's perfect. 
And, uh, you know, next the next series I'm really curious about because I, I think it's such a great series. It's so original um, and really a departure for you uh, from what usually you, you are writing about, um, your Evelyn Talbot Chronicles. Um, the series started with the Hanover House and then Her Darkest Nightmare came out. And then Hello Again is out in October, which is really right. exciting. Um, yeah. You know, it, that serial killer element is just so interesting in there. Um, can you talk a little bit about the series for you, kind of what ha what had you jump to that and what you've really enjoyed about carrying through with the series? Well, I'm really fascinated by deviant behavior because so much of it, I mean, it's, it's ultimately narcissistic because it's so self-serving, but it ends up ruining the person's life who's perpetuating the behavior at the same time. And sometimes they're too short-sighted to see how, how terrible it is even for them. Yeah. Um, so I just thought, I've just, always really studied human behavior. I thought I'd be a psychologist. That's what I, I was going to major in originally. Okay. So I just always had a sort of this interest in human behavior and why people do the things they do. And especially serial killers, because they can't figure out why don't they feel remorse? You know, why don't they feel the same things we do? So when I created this series, I just, I, I Evelyn Talbot's kind of based on my own curiosity, I guess I should say, like I, if, if the same thing had happened to me, I would probably respond the same way. And I've had some people say, Oh my gosh, you know, how can she do it? If she was once attacked by a serial killer, how can she then be with them to study them? So maybe it's, it's an individual thing, but for me, I would want to know why I would fight to get him eventually caught because yeah. the guy who attacked her when she was young was her boyfriend. So the reason why she's so curious is because she thought he loved her. She loved him. Like this came out of nowhere. There was this whole other person inside him that she did not know. And it was so dark. Um, and so it was, you know, something that is her healing, I guess, the way, the way she heals is to try and solve this problem and also to fight back and try and save other people from what she went through. So you want to know what clues are there to, you know, that this person might be dangerous because they put on a lot of, one of the things of a psychopath is their glib charm, right? One of the personality traits. So she's trying to, you know, help with the psychopathy problem and she's very driven to do it and she doesn't feel like maybe she'll ever find love because of what she's been through so of course it was really fun to introduce the romantic element of Amarok which is the only police presence in this small town of Hilltop Alaska where she researches these serial killers so it just was um, a very fascinating thing for me and what inspired me was I, I read the psychopathy test by Ron Ronson is it no John Ronson I think I got his <laughs> But he's an excellent writer, and my editor for, at Harlequin actually gave me that book, and I read it and just devoured it, and it kind of inspired this whole idea for the series, um, where you can have kind of continuing villains, where it isn't just, okay, you know, the heroine's fighting back, and the villain comes up, and then in the, in the black moment, she finally she champions, and it's yep. all over. This is more of a lifelong thing for Evelyn, so it's created this series. I actually think it would make a really good TV series, too, so maybe someday we'll be able to... To hey, get you know that. what? Those Hallmark movies and mysteries are kind of coming out like this, so that could be <laughs> fun too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So I want to talk, though, before we go um, about your Christmas anthology because that I think that um, it's always really interesting to do a seasonal um, – seasonal piece along with your other writing um and you have an anthology coming out with debbie makomer and cheryl woods um uh, can yeah. you talk a little bit about your story which is on a snowy christmas uh -huh. um and uh tell the readers kind of what they can expect yeah that one is actually a reissue so that has been published oh, so it's the only story this year well actually we did a reissue with when lightning strikes too so of the seven books published only five of them are original but okay. trust me that was enough for me <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure but, um, on a snowy Christmas uh, starts out with a bang it's to, uh, the hero and heroine are political enemies they really don't like each other at all and they are trying to go to this um, I think it's a debate that they're trying to go to it's been a while since I wrote it and they get into uh, trouble with really bad snowy weather and their plane crashes so they basically have to rely on each other in trying to survive um, and it it teaches them something new about the other person and suddenly those politics that they thought they didn't like so well is the most important thing so I think that's a, a fun little love story um, and it's definitely got a lot of the, the holiday in it and, and coming home for Christmas and all of that. Is there is there something a piece of of writing those seasonal or Christmas time um, stories? I know you wrote it. You said a while ago, but do you enjoy doing it's taking that departure a little bit, doing something a little more uh, Christmassy and and fun and you know special as opposed to the non specific stories? 
Um, I really like all of it. I think that's why I write so many um, subgenres because it's like, um, I don't know, like sorbet. You get to clean your palate Absolutely. after each book. Um, so I really, like when I'm writing suspense, I think this is the hardest subgenre. Like I can't wait to get back to romance. And then I'll get back into my Whiskey Creek and I think, no, this is the hardest. I can't wait to get back. You know, because when you're doing suspense, you always have that that plot and that fear to kind of yeah. help add reader intrigue. Well, with, with romance, you only have that sexual tension and that, that are they going to get together? How they, well, you know they're going to get together, but how are they going to work through their problems? Right. So it's, um, it's more of a challenge to keep that middle really moving, keep the pace moving, keep it interesting because you not you don't have the two elements, the romance right. and the suspense. Um, so, but then when you get back to the suspense, it's like, wow, that's a tight plotting challenge because everything has to have the red herrings and it has to turn on different things. There has to be surprises. So each one offers different challenges and different rewards. I think that's why I, I love to read all genres too, is because it's the same thing, whatever I'm in the mood for. So I'm really grateful. I mean, I've even written, written historicals, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I just like to switch things up. I'm an eclectic reader, so I'm an eclectic writer. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So can you tell us anything, uh, you know, you've, as if you haven't done enough, because you have, 2017 <laughs> has been quite busy for you and continues to be. Anything else coming down the line for the rest of 2017 or things that readers can look forward to in early 2018? Um, well, actually, I've been very busy with things other than writing, but that are writing related. I've started an online book group, um, and it has grown to 7,200 people, and wonderful. these are the nicest bookworms you will ever meet. Most wonderful. wonderful group ever. So when my daughter suggested I start this, I was thinking, oh, time, you know, deadlines. I'm so glad I did it. I've met the most wonderful people there. So that's something fun that that's I'm working amazing. forward, uh, working on this year. Um, after I finish the book I'm doing now, which is the last Silver Springs book, I will be writing yet another Evelyn Talbot, the one that'll come out next year. Okay. And then I'll be doing a trade book, um, like similar to the Fairham Island books. We haven't okay. decided okay. it'll also be a Fairham Island book, but it'll be, you know, a bigger trade book. Um, so that'll be coming out in 2018. Um, we'll have the mass market of The Secret She Kept, which was my earlier trade release. The mass yes. market will release in April of next Wonderful. year. So it'll be another busy year, not quite as busy as 2017, um, but it'll still be busy. And uh, yeah, I'd like to invite anybody who would like to join the book group to check it out. There's a Absolutely. book group page on my website and you can just see all the fun things we do. I mean, we have yeah. professional reader boxes. We have, you know, monthly meetings with guest authors. We just had Sandra Brown. Oh my which is goodness. one of my personal That's favorites. Amazing. So I flew to, yeah, I flew to Dallas and I interviewed her, um, at her home in Arlington. It's gorgeous oh, and she's awesome. elegant and wonderful. And so we feature guest authors the months that I don't have a release. Um, so that's really fun. We do bookmarks with their name on it that I've signed. We do. I mean, there's just so many things. You got to read the list. So um, that, that's a real fun thing that we started this year that I'm excited about. That's amazing. Well, we can't look forward to some. We can't wait to get so much more. <laughs> and uh, we really are looking forward to it. And of course, as I said, everyone, Silver Springs, um, Finding Our Forever is out now. And then you've got three more coming throughout the year, which is really exciting. So yep. Go binge read and enjoy. And thank you so much for talking with us. It's just been a you blast. Bet. Thank you. It was really nice talking with you. Absolutely. And maybe we can do it again soon for something else you got coming. I hope so. Good, good. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice night. Bye. Bye.